Hello. This video is going to be a very short video, but I want to cover the multiplier addition to the moving averages module. It has some very unique properties that can be very difficult at first to tune. So let's go right to the settings. And as you can see, I have some very interesting numbers. Now right now, these numbers wield a 5% average profit. But notice how the numbers can get very difficult and ticky to work with. It takes patience and fine-tuning. So let's find a coin that is not quite lined up. All right, here we go. The current settings are simply too many purchases. So let's go into our moving averages and actually tone these purchases down. So we have 103, now let's migrate it, 104 is too much, 103 is too many, so now we have to go into the thousandths percentile. And as you can see, it's just a matter of fine tuning these numbers to get precisely where we want. So now let's work on the lower numbers. See if I can fine tune and cut down these purchases. Okay. And we need to go the opposite direction. So here we have a situation where we can really tone down exactly what we're looking for. And notice by taking the time to do this, we now have an average profit of 7.3% for this coin. We have 12 trade cycles, but notice the maximum number of purchases and the current number of purchases. So as you tune these numbers, be sure to keep track of all of these details because they will have an impact as you're working. So you can go back and see in the chart different levels of how these actually work. Now I would not necessarily recommend using this approach by itself unless you have a substantial budget or you are using Relay to trade minimums. TRX, for example, at $0.10 cents a purchase could sustain this kind of trading with a reasonable budget. You wouldn't necessarily profit on the smaller transitions, but for the larger cycles in the hundreds, it would definitely be very profitable. But this could definitely be used as a very good filter for the number of choices that you might have and want to filter out. So the multiplier is just a filter. For the bottom numbers or the lower band, you'll want to consider going as low as you can but zero is the minimum. 
The upper band can go as high as 20, but the numbers will be way out of orbit. Now you can also apply this to long term trends. And as you can see here, these numbers have to be drastically upgraded. So let's see what it takes here. Let's start with, now the lower band is always going to be close to zero. The upper band is always going to be the most difficult. All right, five is way too high. All right. Okay, 1.6, there's the cell markers. Now, let's start going down to the lower numbers and slowing down these purchases some. Okay, 12% profit, so 15 trades, 12% profit for the average, the last one was 15%, so you have, but you have a maximum number of purchases of 1,600. Now you can, of course, keep toning this down and only get, for example, here, it went down to maximum purchases of 21. 76% profit in doing so. So for a long-term approach, you can really hone in to some very significant profits. But you do need to be aware to balance your position size versus your duration. So let's go see what that actually looks like. And first, let's come here. And let's open this up. Here is the statistics analyzer. 2,800, $2,183 dollars if trading view is to be believed. So let's see if we can find more of the purchases. Okay. We can probably tone this up a little more and cut these down. Right, let's see if we can do that. Cut this one out and focus on this one. Okay, there we go. We can see both of them. Okay, let's go to 1.7. Okay. There we go. Now we've just gotten rid of the bump down here, and we have the sell point up here. So let's see. And our profit is now 89%, but only one trade. And 21 purchases per cycle for the one single completed trade. So using the multiplier can hone in on the peaks and valleys significantly, but it does take time to really sit and capitalize on the purchases. If you're looking for long-term or short-term, this approach works well. 
It also works as a very good filter for other processes to cut down the number of purchases. Okay, it started back in March. And see. March of 2020. One, two, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So almost a year for this one single position. So in waiting for a year, your position size has to be extreme to be able to make the profit of holding this that long. So it's not something to simply do with an $11 position. Even a $1,000 position might not be enough for this kind of a situation if this is your only recipe and operation. Now, if you're using this as a hedge, then all bets are off and it's risk versus reward. If you're using this as a, this is it, this is what you're focused on approach, then you need to really calculate what your risk levels are going to be. But from the standpoint of this approach, as you can see, it does very well. And this is by itself, without dollar cost averaging, or any other mechanical process to weed out any unwanted signals. Now you can add all that in, but I wanted to focus just on the mechanical process of the multiplier itself. Hopefully this video makes tuning this a little bit easier, because it can be quite challenging. Until next time.